So CSP, um, this is like a data center focused, although you could use it in other places than I, I, I have. Um, we looked at the virtual services in the data center earlier. This is something I built to try to kind of represent those same, you know, ones before. And these are pretty much the standardized combo of any, you know, data center. You're coming in, you may be turning on, terminating on a VPN, WAN acceleration, a WAC is a Gartner term for WAN optimization concentrator. I didn't get that on my first abbreviation slide. I missed that one. Um, firewall monitor, right? So this, that's your application access chain. That could be x86. Uh, or the, 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 the WAN termination, then the application access, and then the east-west, right? So this actually reminds me, how many people remember like the Catalyst 6500 service chassis concept? So good, that was the most hands raised. <laughs> um, so, so when a 7K came out, we're like, Cisco, are you gonna build you know, blades for the 7K? Well, we never really got around to it. So we took the 6K, stuck it on the side, and we used like a firewall service module, an ACE and an AMP. All of a sudden it became a service chassis, right? Traffic went in, hit those, you know, service modules, and it came back to the 7K. So that concept, think of it with x86 clusters off of the 7K or whatever the core switch is, so that, um, uh, you know, that, that's what we'll do. Well, I'll talk about, you know, how we do it in a second. So, so, so some of the demand we see, like I have one customer that, you know, they're very virtualized, they're deploying applications very quickly, and, you know, they can't get the firewall load balancer functions deployed fast enough. So conceptually, they're moving to a model of, I'm going to do a firewall load balancer for every application, right? So it's no longer, and this, this happened when, when I worked on ACE, and I went to one of my pharmaceuticals, and they said, uh, so first I thought 256 virtual contexts was going to be enough, and 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 like because I was thinking you know the number of business units they have or something like that, so this pharma said to me that's not enough. I'm like what do you mean 256 is a lot? We we want one per application because on a load balancer that's a shared device, if if one application team was making a change to the load balancer, all the other application teams had veto authority. So so the change control became like really hard. So that's also part of the reason the trend that I see is like. A service, like a pair of services or service nodes for applications, smaller, spun up quickly, dedicated. So now, like, you know, I don't have the same kind of change control problem because it's one per app. Uh, so keeping up with the server team, that's part of that. It's getting things deployed quickly after the application's deployed. Uh, ESXi, like, I get a choice. Do I want to put it on this virtual services on ESXi or KVM? Well, generally, ESXi is more expensive than KVM even after Cisco like resells it. They generally don't want to do full-blown OpenStack because that's hard. Um, we've got, uh, they don't have, act, the network team doesn't have access to the vCenter server very often, so they can't really be in control and deploy those services. Um, they don't have the tool set to manage the virtual services. Uh, they don't have Linux expertise, and we went through that, so um, we're not sitting on Linux all day long. Um, and, uh, you know, we're comfortable with physical appliances, and that's, you know, the concept here. Um, and then sometimes you need hardware acceleration. So uh, we, we have, you know, cadmium cards we can put in there for SSL offload. Like the example with Citrix Netscaler was the performance for SSL went up 80-fold when we added cadmium nitrox. And right now in this CSP, we're planning to add their liquid security product. Uh, Radware's on board, F5, A10, there's a bunch, bunch uh, consuming it. And that's another case where the virtual service node has to do something to take advantage of that card, right? So this is essentially, you know, what we have. Uh, hardware acceleration when necessary. Uh, bare metal provisioning, that's if it's in a branch office, otherwise we're just pre-installing software on servers. Um, and you can actually, we're, we're starting to build in the orderability so that you can add your virtual services online when you order this so that they, you know, show up with your virtual services pre-installed, right? Um, Lifecycle management, so I want to be able to provision, operate, retire virtual services. Um, chaining uh, coming, and, uh, and then clustering, so scale out. So some kind of management of multiple boxes, not per box management. We'll talk about that in a second. So uh, this is essentially the block diagram for the CSP. It's uh, RHEL 7.2 under the covers. Again, CompD hides that from you. Um, that's coming, UCS servers initially. 
Uh, you can run all kinds of things, and I have a list later on. Uh, very often, people are just running controllers on it. So, like even just management, you know, uh, applications, prime service catalog, DCNM, like v controllers, VTS, ODL, all these things can just run. It's just a hosting platform that's got KVM under the covers, but you don't see it. Yeah. So support for KVM, is it the Google Lighting or Red Hat? So we're supporting the product, they're like tier three. So if we have a, if there's actually a, a bug in KVM or something like that, then we open a case with them and they fix it and we deliver it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, a, it's you know, readily available, RHEL 7, like this is sort of the period, like we were set, this shipped with 7.0 in the fall and 7.2 came out in the fall. Uh, so we're about three months behind uh, incorporating 7.2. So we'll keep keep up with them. So upgrades are day two yet then? Should we, um, so if you, I understand you're upgrading it to a new version. So how would you uh, be upgrade? Do we need support from you when upgrading it? No, you, well, you'll get like a, something you can install on top unless the kernel changes. So everything's cool unless the kernel changes, then it's a, a more abrupt. Uh, so, let me go through some of these. So easy to use, turnkey, um, really like if uh, it's for the network team, the security team, the load balancer teams. Um, does like, like management, like you don't have to go into your data center anymore, essentially you just, you know, put a box in the data center, you could have a, a Netscaler and an F5 running on the same platform side by side. You could migrate from Netscaler to F5, F5 to Netscaler, you know, whatever, but the hardware is one. So you, put the hardware in your data center, or in your branch for that matter, and you don't have to go there again. <coughs> so, uh, <coughs> you know, five years or whatever the lifespan of the thing is. Uh, so you deploy the services as fast as applications, DevOps, like even with ACI, I mean, we haven't done this automation, but you can, through APIs, which I'll show you in a second, provision a new service, uh, register it with the APIC controller if you're doing ACI, and then consume it from ACI, right? So this can sit on an ACI fabric too, for east-west services, firewall services in the fabric. Um, go through some of those. It's a shared pool of resources. So if you have one box in a cluster, and I do want to try to get to a demo, so I'm going to speed up. If you have one box in a cluster, you had a second box. The cluster is a pool of resources. And there's even APIs where if you wanted to optimize the placement, which we don't do this for you yet, but you could query any device. Any, every device is a manager. You query any device, you get a list of all the resources in the cluster, and you can pick the one that has the most available resources, conceptually. Um, you can, when you deploy a service, you can check off and say this is an HA pair, and pick the other box that you want to deploy. So if you have the two boxes in a core of the data center, you know, left, left right side of the seven Ks, you could say, you know, these are a pair, and I'm gonna deploy primary here, deploy the backup over there. So you get your two services automatically deployed, same size, you know, same exact service. All right, so a little bit of automation help there. Um, and then high performance, uh, you can see, you know, supported through KVM. The virtual services. So initially this was an effort to replace the uh, Nexus 10, 10, 11, 10 product, um, which was not open Linux and, you know, just had a limited number of virtual services supported. So what we did was made that open Linux. And uh, and you can see these are all the services we've, we've tested. Uh, and when I say tested, it's functionally tested. It boots, it loads, it runs. Um, when you start getting into sizing and performance in this environment, you know, many of us feel uncomfortable, like because it's it's more like a, a VMware environment that you're running an application and you need to research the performance of that application in that environment. So when you say, you know, how's my ASA performance gonna be or even Juniper SRX or Checkpoint, um, it, it means you need to know what the KVM performance of that virtual service is on you know, essentially Linux, Red Hat, KVM running on an x86 server with this many cores and this much memory, right? So there's there's more in a design and sizing. We're not guaranteeing like we do in a ISR router that you can turn on all the features and you get this bandwidth out of it. You know, like that's not there. Although we're gonna try to do that with our services, but we can't do that with everything, right? And then you can see third party over here. So just a long list and really anything that runs on KVM, you can spin up. Uh, these are the types of services in the different places in the network. Uh, you probably, <coughs> probably know all that. Um, take that away. This is the software block diagram. So you can see the Comp D running inside the configuration database. 
you know, we'll look at the web server GUI. So essentially we created the code for the web server to create a workflow. Um, and then there's C and Python code that creates the libvirt commands to provision, you know, the virtual machine. So you're not, you're not doing that and you're getting like a, a nice easy workflow interface. So <coughs> if we don't get to the demo, it's in the slides here. This is a YouTube video that, that I uploaded. Um, and these are some screenshots we'll go through quickly because I do want to get to it. Uh, so, you know, you have an initial screen where you can have all these resources available in a cluster. This is a cluster of one. <laughs> uh, and then you have an image repository. Now this is nice because if you have five boxes in your cluster, the images can be placed on any box and this queries all the boxes. So if an image is on any box, it, it presents that image to you. And you can go into any one of the boxes to get this interface. So it's, you know, it's like a shared, shared environment. Um, and then, you know, physical ports when you're on a box. I helped them with the initial user interface. And I, I love this concept because like a networking company, when we started building this, it was like, well, we're going to build, you know, virtual switches and then we'll do virtual services and then we'll attach the virtual ser services to the switches and create this whole network inside. And I was like, <laughs> let's think of it from the virtual service standpoint. Okay, if when you deploy a virtual service, it can only connect to two things. It can connect to a PNIC outside, or it can connect to another service inside, right? So networking logic, those are your two choices. So when you go to add interfaces to a virtual service through the wizard, it's like, do you want to connect to the inside or the outside? <coughs> and if you want to connect to the outside, what PNIC do you want to connect to? Here's your list, right? Um, so it really, you do not have to provision the networks inside. It's just like you're connecting things to each other, logically. And then, so this is the sort of workflow, and this is a very busy slide, which the, the video will do a much better job, so let's try not to spend too much time. But you can see the GUI on the left side. There's a CLI on the right side. So um, we had this in WAS, but essentially you can copy and paste to configure or deploy another service, right? You'll see that in the video also. And then there's a, a REST API, which you can use a curl, you know, URL request to instantiate the same service. So, you know, like in ConfD, consistent, you know, interface across, across all of them. And, you know, this is just painfully animating <coughs> little lines of what goes where, how, uh, I, didn't, I didn't create this slide. One of the engineers did, did you guess it? <laughs> um, but it's, it's good. Um, it actually looks better when all the lines are there than, you know, one at a time. And, and then once you're done, you have, you know, your services, and you can see here a bunch of different services. UCSD is running, Viral, you can run that on here, VTC, um, XRV. Like, actually, I have one of my financial customers, you know, I just want to run XRV as a BGP route reflector. So I'm not sending data through and routing it through XRV. It's just acting as a standalone, you know, route reflector on a stick. Um, so this was just, you know, you have to, because I was like, all right, what do the Yang files look like in a nightly build? So, you know, these are the example Yang files that describe to like an NSO, this is how you can manage me, right? And that can be immediately consumed by NSO so that you can start provisioning virtual machines on top of this CSP box, right? Um, and that's some more of that. So now, like we're actually going through a process now, and this is again in process, so I can't really tell you the, 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 the details or the end result. But just imagine I can do networking inside or I can do networking outside. I just mentioned that. So this is an example, and I you know, tried to draw this. So it's two Nexus 7Ks. I've got two x86 CSPs on either side, and we're going to do that example of firewall load balancer. And so uh, over here, you know, I'm not going to use all the NICs, but essentially I'm going to come into a firewall, come back out. So in this case, I'm using external networks. So I deploy that virtual, that, that, that ASA firewall, and I'm like, outside interface, connect to here, inside interface, connect to here, and essentially the networking is taking place in the physical switches. The service chaining is taking place in the physical switches, and I'm using VIRT-IO, and the reason we are testing this right now is because the Juniper SRXs uh, were so slow in one of the tests we did, so we're like testing external networking versus internal networking um, for that reason, and, and they don't support VIRT-IO, right? So we're doing ASA with VIRT-IO, with uh, one of the load balancers with, with VIRT-IO, right? So, so I can do the networking in the physical switch, and really I'm just, I'm just using this as a hosting platform and then attaching everything to a physical NIC. And it could be VLANs, it could be one cable, 
and two VLANs, right? Or you know, separate separate cable. But essentially, load balancer firewall on a stick, right? Or I could come into the you know this this virtual platform once, uh, hit the firewall, and do internal networking. Essentially, when I create the it, the trusted side of the firewall, I'm like, I want to connect that to my F5 or load, load balancer. And then the load balancer has two interfaces, one internal, one external to the, to the physical switch again. So in this case, like it's only one hop inside, but OBS hasn't been all that performant. So we will be, I mean, we're still, you know, it's decent, but uh, we'll probably be adding VPP there uh, as an option. And I have that somewhere here. That's the thing we just open sourced. Um, so those are two kind of concepts. And then just imagine, you know, NSO can manage this stuff, and we're coming out with some enterprise kind of management platforms too. Uh, so you have services control. You've got all these services right on top. You've got, you know, Comfy uh, as a shell. And you can use NSO to manage some of them. Like if you have a NED for the ASA, you could use it to manage the config on the ASA. But if you don't, like if you're running WAS, you could spin up the WAS and then just have WAS registered to the WAS central manager and let it be configured, you know, by the WAS uh, tool. So these are just some new capabilities in the CSP 2.0 software that's being released this month. Uh, Multi-disk, so like some of this stuff was, you know, WAS has multiple file partitions, one for the bit cache and one for the file system, so we had to add that. XRV had multiple console ports, so like five, so we had to support five exposing five console ports to a service. So you'll see things like that up here. It's also service templates, kind of like conceptually like UCS service profiles, but for a virtual service. So if I create one of these virtual services, I can reuse you know, the template sizing, disk sizing, memory sizing, CPU sizing, over and over. So I could have a standard for my F5s or a standard for my net scalers, and I can reuse that deployment standard. External storage. That makes availability easier, so we, we added NFS external storage to it. There's actually one service provider that's, because uh, this, this reminds me of it, like looking at not buying Nutanix and doing this because they were going to host virtual services on a Nutanix platform. 